so today we are back. It is day one of 15 Days of Foundation. This is the third 15 Days of Foundation series I've done on my channel. I do these every four months-ish. It's a new foundation first impression video every single day for 15 days. If you missed it or you are new here and you're just stumbling across this video, Hello, welcome to the Bayrito fam. I'm gonna leave a link for the announcement video down below. That's basically where I go through all of the information you will ever need to know about this series, about Project Beauty Share, t-shirts, eBay shop, where you can purchase makeup. 100% of the proceeds are going to Project Beauty Share. There's also playlists down below for each series. So if you missed any of the first two, you can go back and watch those and catch up. I feel like I have so much information to tell you guys right now. I don't even know where to start. The best way to follow along with 15 Days of Foundation is definitely on Snapchat and Twitter. Snap fam knows what's up. Up. Each night after 15 days of foundation, I do comment shout outs on Snapchat. You can also send in any photos with the hashtag 15 days of foundation on social media for a chance to be featured in the video at the end. I'm pre-recording these a shit ton, so there's gonna be a delay in the first like eight or nine videos probably. I think that's everything I had to say. Let's jump into the foundation. Let's do this, day one. This was one of the most requested foundations. This is the brand new Natasha Denona X Foundation X Full Coverage Foundation. Let's read some of the claims on Sephora. So I've actually never tried anything from Natasha Tasha Denona, this will be my first product. This retails for $45. You get 1.01 ounces of product, pretty much standard amount. $45 is actually priced pretty low, I feel like, for Natasha Denona. Her eyeshadow palettes retail for $239 to give you some perspective on this product and just on life. Like what? Natasha Denona is an internationally renowned makeup artist. I would go on her website and read her biography because it's really interesting. She has a really interesting background, just go read it. And I kind of feel like we could be friends. Natasha Denona, hit a girl up. She has a magic primer and the primer retails for $55. So it's interesting that this is actually priced lower than the primer. I'm not complaining. I was actually kind of shocked. I was expecting this to be more in the $60 range. $45 is obviously high end, it's still pricey, but it's not up there with Giorgio Armani and some of the other high end brands. This comes in 11 shades. I have the lightest shade, which is 10 neutral fair. It says on here, shade is suitable for all undertones. I'm gonna show you guys swatches so you can see how this foundation compares to some of the other lightest foundations that I own but off the bat I could tell you that this one definitely is a bit more yellow I wouldn't say that this is suitable for all undertones especially if you're more pink all right so swatch time right here is the Natasha Denona X foundation in the lightest shade 10 next to it is Maybelline fit me matte and poreless in 110 then we have the pure cosmetics bear doll foundation in the shade porcelain the lightest shade dermacol 208 urban decay naked skin in 0 0.5 and then Tarte rainforest of the sea in the lightest shade porcelain so this is just to give you a reference of some of the lightest shades of other products and how much they vary. 11 shades, not super great. I'm guessing that they'll expand the line. So it says it's a long lasting full coverage radiant foundation that doesn't settle in to fine lines and leaves the skin with a naturally radiant flawless finish. Never looks thick, dry, or cakey on the skin. This full coverage foundation is infused with special ingredients that help balance the T-zone area and absorb excess oils on the skin. It's formulated to support anti-aging, blah, 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 help defend against pollution. I've seen so many products lately with pollution, anti-pollution claims, it's really interesting. This product is also cruelty-free. So those are all the claims on this product. If you guys are excited for this video and 15 days of foundation, hell yeah, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see how the Natasha Denona foundation found, oh. Foundation X applies when wears throughout the day. You're in the right place, just keep watching. She has a great last name. All right, so it is 9.30 in the morning. It's Saturday when I'm filming this. Can't believe it's day one. My body feels kind of crappy right now, so if I'm not totally with it, that is why. So in any recent foundation videos, pretty much in the last six to eight months, I'm pretty sure I've been using the Jouer Anti-Blemish Matte Primer. That one I'm out of, and I have so many primers that I've been trying to find one that works. I didn't want to use different primers throughout this series because I didn't want to have any kind of added variable. So I asked you guys on Snapchat if you'd rather see no primer or if you'd rather see me use the Laura Mercier foundation primer in every single video. Reason why I chose this one is because I've used this for years. I've gone through three or four bottles of this. I know how it performs. I love it. The vast majority of you said you wanted to see me use this primer since I do use a primer on an everyday basis. So I feel like that makes most sense as well. So we're going to be using this primer throughout the whole series. There's no fancy name on here it literally just says foundation primer. I feel like that's kind of refreshing. The names on products now are so intense. I have a product that literally just says foundation primer. You go Laura Mercier. Say it like it is. Definitely need more coffee right now. Let's take this thing out of the box. I haven't even looked at the packaging or anything yet. Ooh, it's like a frosted glass bottle white top and there is a pump. Like usual I'm going to use a foundation brush on one side of my face and then a sponge on the other just to see 
if there's a difference in application. I have combination skin with cystic acne, clearly. I get pretty oily throughout the day. This one does say it's supposed to be oil controlling, so that is promising. Any foundation that says it's oil controlling, I'm all about. This has a really tiny spout, like it's coming out in minuscule pumps, which makes me think maybe you don't need a whole lot of product. I'm gonna start out with about a dime size amount. This is the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. I usually use the e.l.f. Powder Brush. I just use it for foundation. This one is a bit more flimsy, so if I don't like it with this brush, I'll just switch to another brush. I have high hopes for this. So let's just stipple this on. Go to town, folks. Oh, feels very lightweight. I actually think I'm gonna switch brushes. This feels a little bit flimsy. And try with my normal e.l.f. brush. It looks a bit yellow shade-wise. It feels super lightweight. Like it almost doesn't feel like you have anything on. It is transferring right now, but could just be because it's not set yet. So I used up that whole amount. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit more for the forehead. This is definitely looking like a matte finish with the brush. It just says a naturally radiant flawless finish. It doesn't say if it's supposed to be more matte or dewy or anything. With the brush is looking a little bit dry in certain parts. So I'm gonna try the sponge on the other side. I definitely like how this applies better with the sponge and it's just way quicker. The finish with the sponge is looking like flawless. Matte, but doesn't look heavy or dry. And I'm getting about the same coverage. I actually feel like I'm getting better coverage with the sponge, which is kind of rare for me. I usually get a bit better coverage with a brush. I would say I got pretty much full coverage on this side. This side I would say is high medium coverage. I'm gonna show you guys up close actually. So you can still see my skin coming through freckles and stuff. This side looks like it has a bit higher coverage to me. I think my forehead looks good. The center of the forehead looks pretty good. I'm gonna go in for a second layer on just the areas that I need a bit more coverage and we will see if this thing is buildable. Actually not building the best. Since it almost has like a powder finish, when you build this one, it looks a bit textured. Definitely looks heavier when you build it than it does on just a first layer. It's covering better for sure. Now we're at total full coverage. Just looking at it normal length way, it doesn't look horrible or anything, but when you get up close, you can see, it just kind of looks like you already have a powder on. I definitely will not be powdering my face with this because it is supposed to be oil controlling. I wanna see how that works. And because it's already pretty much powder finish. I mean, it looks pretty good, even with that second layer. The shade is definitely a little bit off for me. It's always hard to tell under these lights, but my neck is definitely more pink. I love how lightweight it feels. It kind of just feels like you have a powder foundation on. When I touch my face, it's not transferring as, as much at all as before. So I think you just have to give it a few minutes to set down. So right now it is 9.48. Whoa, that was hella fast. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup. I feel like I'm forgetting something. That was just really quick. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, so it's now 10.07, so we're gonna call the check-in time 10 o'clock since it's pretty much when I finished up my face and everything. So I did not set my face with a powder. Since this does dry down to more of a powder finish, like I said, I think if you put a powder on top, it would have to be a very finely milled, kind of lightweight powder, or else I feel like it could look a bit powdery. But I did set my face using the Catrice Prime and Fine Setting Spray. I'm almost out of this. I was looking a tiny bit dry on my forehead and certain parts of my face, and once I put the setting spray on, it just kind of helped to get rid of that. So right now my skin is looking great. Soft matte finish, I didn't spot conceal anywhere so the coverage you're seeing is all the foundation. The only area where it doesn't look great great is around my nose, it's looking a little bit creasy. <clears throat> what was that? Hopefully that doesn't get worse throughout the day. Right now, I mean, it's barely noticeable, but when you get up close, I can see. I tried to warm up my face a lot so the shade doesn't look quite as off. One of the issues I have with foundations that set to kind of a powder finish is that when I put on my under eye concealer sometimes, it gets weird textured since you're basically putting a liquid on top of a powder. And that didn't happen at all with this. So that was a good sign. My under eyes look good. It's not sitting weird on top of the foundation or anything. Blush, bronzer, highlight, everything blended out great on top since you're pretty much putting it on top of a powder. So I'm gonna tell you guys what's on the rest of my face. So for bronzer, I actually used a face powder. This is the Burberry Warm Honey. That's what it looks like. I also use this on the crease in my eyes. For blush, I use the Sigma Blush in Peaceful. Highlight's my favorite, Essence Eyeshadow and Snowflake. I'm obsessed with this. This is a couple bucks and it's amazing as a highlight. Eyes, I use the Milk Makeup Pigment in Hotel Lobby. I wanna like these. I keep trying to make them work. 
they just don't work for me. Not a fan of these. Had to put something on top of it, so I went in with this shade right here, which is actually a highlight, but it worked as eyeshadow. But I do mascara as my usual, Too Faced Brad and Sex, Wet n Wild Mega Length, and then lips. I used Rimmel 32 Innocent Liner. This is great. I love this shade. And then on top, I put the MUA lip gloss in the shade Baby Pink. So like I said, it is Saturday. I'm actually going to work from a coffee, work from a coffee shop today. The next check-in I do will be in natural lighting in a few hours, so I'll check back in with you guys then. All right, so it's now 4.20, so the foundation's been on for six and a half hours. Checking in a little late. Rach's eating her pizza over here. <laughs> We're in Elkai. I just worked from a place over here, and I don't think it looks that great. What do you think? No? Not the best one you've ever had. Yeah, it looks a little bit cakey to me. Like, I actually noticed an hour in. Why are my windshield wipers on right now? I actually noticed an hour in it started creasing on my upper lip literally an hour after I had it on before I even left and it just looks kind of heavy to me for not having a powder on at all. I feel like you guys can see the texture there for only being on for six and a half hours so far not great. I also feel like my forehead looks kind of dry or something is going on. So I'm gonna keep this on. I will check back in with you guys at the end of the night. <laughs> it's now 8 20 so the foundation's been on for a little over 10 hours and Ooh, I feel like it's kind of hard to look totally bad under the ring light and I feel like it does. So for most of the final check-ins during this series, I'm gonna be doing it in the bathroom lighting because I feel like it's a bit more realistic, but my Canon G7X vlogging camera that I'm gonna be using hasn't come in yet. I should get it in like a day or two. So until then, I'm just gonna use my good camera under the lights, not looking great. I would say it literally looked good for the first hour maybe, and then from there, it just started looking heavier and cakier. It just looked cakey and powdery. It kind of rubs off. Like you can see down here on this side of my face and then also over here kind of where I rest my hands it's totally off right there it kind of just looks a bit patchy to me here's where it's rubbed off over here it just doesn't look great at all everything just looks kind of splotchy and patchy to me a bit of cakiness increasing around the nose area there's a bit of separation on the center of my forehead it's looking better under this light for sure but Hopefully you guys can see this, but it's kind of settling into the wrinkles on my forehead up here, these lines. So if you have more mature skin or any kind of wrinkles, this will probably settle into it because I have pretty fine lines on my forehead right now and it definitely is creasing there. Yeah, like look around this area, it just looks very heavy. So I think this is one of those that I liked when it went on. I liked for the first hour and then it just kind of went downhill from there for me. I definitely would not wear this one again. I don't think I would even mix this in with another product. So hopefully day two will have a better foundation. <laughs> so I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you're excited for 15 days of foundation. Don't forget to follow along on all my social media, which I will put over here again. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.